The martial law portions of Rex 84 were outlined in a 1982 memo written by FEMA Deputy John Brinkerhoff. Martial law was to be declared in the event of a national crisis, yet the plan did not define the term national crisis. The plan allowed FEMA to take control of both federal and state governments, appointing military commanders to replace duly elected officials. The plan also called for the rounding up of at least 21 million American Negroes for delivery to numerous military bases converted into prison centers, also known as FEMA relocation camps. Why? Because at that time, African Americans were classified as one of the largest threats to the continuity of the federal government. Who does the federal government consider the biggest threat these days? Uh, folks, we've got a very serious situation here. I'm holding what is called the right-wing extremism, current economic and political climate, fueling resurgence and radicalization and recruitment. And in it, we talked about the fact that they define pro-lifers as domestic terrorists. They put this in a Department of Homeland Security uh, document, this official assessment, now saying pro-lifers, people that believe in end-time prophecies, people that uh, are opposed to the administration's position on immigration, uh, those of us that that are standing up for the sanctity of life and for the sanctity of marriage, all of those are now potential, and this is what they're saying, domestic terrorists. It's a terrorist next door that could be our bigger threat. They call people who believe in the sanctity of life, who believe in owning firearms, who believe in serving their country in the military and coming back, who are very concerned about the policies that this nation is embarking on, spending too much money, taxing too much. It's all listed right here. These are the domestic right-wing extremists. One million names under the watchful eye of the United States. America's so-called terrorist watch list has hit the record number, according to one of the country's most prominent civil liberties groups. That's a lot of people to keep track of. They're adding new people all the time. It's a secret list that you don't know really quite how one gets on and you don't know how you get off. It says in 1987, a far more complete account of plans drawn up under the Reagan administration appeared in the Miami Herald. The story reported that Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, then embroiled in the Iran-Contra scandal, had prepared a plan to su suspend the Constitution in the event of a crisis, including widespread internal dissent or national opposition to the U.S. military invasion abroad. So all these plans center around the idea of imposing martial law to quell uh, civil disobedience and political dissent. So anybody who's a dissident is a potential threat under these martial law plans that have been drawn up. A collaborator, then Federal Emergency Management Agency Director, Louis Gufrida, had years earlier discussed in a paper how, in the event of an uprising by black militants, martial law might be declared and some 21 million American Negroes interned. It says, although some criticism of the military and the militarization of police in the United States may well be legitimate, Jade Helm 15 is just what officials say it is, an exercise by about 1,200 special ops troops that ran between July 15th and September 15th, mostly on private land, to prepare for fighting overseas. A government that has drafted all of these contingency plans for continu continuity of government uh, to quell political dissidents, uh, to round up and detain large numbers of citizens we're supposed to just trust out of hand when they say it's just a training exercise for, uh, for fighting abroad. Is that it? Is that what you expect us to do?